Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Does everyone have issues from their parents? Pretty much, yes. Is Pearl related to Maxine from X? Nope. Have you ever seen a prequel or sequel come so soon after the first one? I see what you did there, and I refuse to be crude on the intro. All this and more on Gory Storytime. Warning. Gory Storytime is a horror movie review show by a son and his dad who thought that letting his five-year-old watch scary movies was acceptable. If you are offended by horror or talk about blood and gore by a child, or if you don't want horror movies from the 60s through today spoiled, then there is a remote stuck in your couch cushion next to potato chip crumbs. Use it. And of course, parental discretion is advised. Why? You didn't use any. Shut up and start the show. Welcome to Gory Storytime. I'm your host, Jason. And I'm his co-host and his father, Craig. And this week, we're reviewing the prequel to last week's episode. Indeed we are. Um, again, we're doing four movies that were released last year that we, for the most part, watched towards the end of the year. was basically what it was. And they all were. Not all over the Christmas break, but at least two of them were, if not three. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and, you know... X came out last year, and so did its prequel, Pearl. Yes. Uh, if you've seen X, Pearl was the older lady in it, and this is her as a young lady explaining Why where she, she got her the way thirst she for is. killing yeah. and her insatiable appetite for, you know... The other thing? Yeah, for adult things. Um and it's basically her, and she wants to go into town, and she meets this guy that's a projectionist at a local theater, and he want, he tells her that she can make it out of the farm life that she's stuck on. Again, if you've seen X, you know that she's on a farm as an elderly person, so it didn't necessarily work out that way. That's not even really a spoiler if you've I seen... I mean, if you've seen X where she's old and on a farm... Right. I mean... It doesn't say she left and came back, so. Um, anyway, that seems to be the I mean, basic yeah. premise, right? So why don't we roll into the trailer and let you see what we're talking about. during these times is admirable. But you only get one take at this life. If only they would just die. Pardon? Nothing. Theta! I want to be special, dancing up on the screen like the pretty girls in the pictures. I want <laughs> I will not let you leave this farm again. I'm worried there may be something real wrong with me. Rumor has it they only take one gal per town. We're looking for someone with X Factor. It has to be me. How about a film nobody else has seen? Is it legal? It will be eventually. I know what I've done. Bad things. Terrible, awful, murderous things. I want to be loved from as many people as possible. But truth is, I'm not really a good person. All right. 
Yep. Um, anything else you want to say before we get into the show itself? As far Go as, watch it. Yeah, like... Before we do all of the behind the scenes and tell you all the ins and outs of this movie and spoil everything for you. It's not a lot of spoilers, Go. but you know. Go spoil it for yourself by watching the movie first. That's not really spoiling. Yeah, it is. You want them to spoil our show by knowing stuff already? Yes. No, that's not how it works because this is behind the scenes. It's not the stuff that's on the screen anyway. Well, some of it is. I just explained some of it. Um, but before we get into the behind the scenes information that he was just speaking about, yes, we have to tell you why we're really here. See, it turns out while we are actually horror fans and we do like watching and reviewing horror movies, that was just an excuse to sell out and let big corporations back up a truck full of, you know, this time it was uh, wooden dimes, which was weird. Wooden the, dimes. Yeah, I've heard of wooden nickels. I didn't even know they made dimes. But. <laughs> I mean, yes, wooden dimes. I'm not confused by that at all. I mean, I try to say a different thing each time. And, you know, why wooden nickels when you can have wooden dimes? It works twice as much. Anyway. Um, and then, you know, we then sell ourselves here on the internet for those who, uh, you know, would purchase these things. And that's how we make our living. Because, you know, we are obviously rolling in it. You know, the problem with you doing that, like that, like I would be wearing the same thing. I'd just be wearing more of it. No, what you'd be wearing is one that wasn't like worn out no. and stepped on. No, I'd, I'd wear this one. Anyway. Um, this week, we made all sorts of money for the big, you know, big corporations. Piles of yes, uh, for advertising coins. these wonderful things that actually exist. <clears throat> Gory Story Time is brought to you by Psychos, the cereal for psychopaths. While Psychos tastes like another well-known oat cereal, they don't have just the benefits you would expect from a bowl of regular bland cereal. No, no, no. Psychos also have a mix of benzodia dia <laughs> benzodiazepine and thorazine to calm your raging violent streaks. Part of a complete breakfast. Wow, well, I'm sold. <laughs> and by Thought Stalls, the adult the adults only doll line. Unlike children's toys, these figures are anatomically correct. Collect all the thoughts we have Cindy with an S, Betty Jane, a.k.a. BJ, Ivana Gitsum, <laughs> and many more. And coming soon, Studs, the male doll's version of Thoughts. Look for them at your local adult shop. There's nothing quite as hot as when a stud finds himself a thought. Anyway. <laughs> All right, now. Let's get into the meat, meat and, and beef, beef of, of the, the show. show. Or as I like to call it, the meat and beef of the show. Because, you know, what he likes is meat and beef, which goes with the plot of this movie, actually. Because <laughs> he, he's a lot more like Pearl than I ever realized. Anyway. <clears throat> you want to go first? You want me sure. to? Sure. Go ahead. Pearl's climactic monologue goes for 7 minutes and 57 seconds consists of 17 shots, and the last shot goes for 5 minutes and 37, uh, 36 seconds. Uh, Tandy Wright, who plays Pearl's mother, was the intimacy coordinator on X and was offered the role of Ruth as the shoot on the first film was wrapping up. According to Ty West, she learned German for the role and in a hurry, uh, becoming so convincing with her accent, she fooled two German members of the crew. Wow. Uh, to prepare for the tone of this movie, director slash co-writer Ty West suggested that Mia Goth watch Whatever Happened to Baby Jane and The Wizard of Oz. Secretly filmed simultaneously with X, Pearl serves as a prequel, showing the title's character, title character's early life in 1918, decades before the events of X. Uh, the pornographic film shown to Pearl is a free ride, a free ride from 1915, a real vintage stag film. The film's production is the subject of some debate. 
It surfaced in the 70s and was at one point sold by a shady distributor as a hardcore D.W. Griffith from 1915, while silent film historian Kevin Brownlow has posited that it was made in the early 20s. Uh, The first screenwriting and producing credits for lead actor Mia Goth. Uh, A teaser for the sequel to X was shown at the end of the credits in some territories titled Maxine with three X's. The sequel will be set in the 80s. And, yeah. Uh, I guess it's also at the end of the DVD of Pearl. And And we did not watch through the credits, so we need to do that. Um, Originally meant to be filmed in black... Wait, nope, wrong one. According to Ty West, the homeowners of the house the film is set in enjoyed the makeover of the house in Barn that production gave so much they presumably have not changed it. Either that or they're just like, yeah, whatever. Uh, Originally meant to be filmed in black and white, but 824 were against it, so it was made in extremely vivid color. Mia Goth claims another reason for the switch from black to black and white to bright colors was that the team felt like films being made in that way had white to bright colors. What? Switch from uh, black and white. Oh, wait, no. Had become, become its, its own, own thing. thing. Yeah. I'm and like, she what? said Ty West wanted to do something different and unique. He was reading the same line twice. Um Mia Goth interprets the character of the projectionist as a figment of Pearl's imagination, one which she can project her desires onto. Oh. Well, the only thing that's weird about that is it doesn't actually I mean, make sense like he's with... he's totally a dude in this movie that does stuff. Right. And interacts with other characters. Right. And unless the whole town is made up... Well... Due to various bootlegged clips of the film surfacing online, A24 had taken it upon themselves to simply post these short clips on their TikTok account, most notably Pearl's argument with the projectionist and Pearl wa- wailing, I'm a star, upon rejection at the audition. The screenplay spawned from Mia Goth and Ty West doing character prep for the older version of Pearl seen in X, which had become a full-length script. Uh, the production team had around 50 swatches of red in order to get the bright color of the red of the barn perfect. Pearl's alligator is named Theta after Theta Barra, who was an American silent film actress and one of cinema's earliest sex symbols. Viewers may notice a poster of Theta Barra displayed on the exterior of the picture house that Pearl regularly frequents. Ah. Picture house, theater. Theater, right. Uh, online fans of the film often lovingly call it Joker for Girls because of how s- some of the female fans find Pearl relatable, similarly to how male fans of the 2019 film relate to the titular character. I kind of see what they're saying. This is. And that writer. would explain why she was imagining the. Projectionist? Yeah, that would actually fit better, but. And she is one of the co-writers, so if she took it that way, then maybe that's what she meant it to be. She was a co-writer. But anyway, um, with the release of the first publicity poster, it was announced that West would once again serve as the film's editor alongside his other production roles, that Elliot Rocket would return as cinematographer, and Tyler Bates and Tim Williams would serve as co-composers for the film's score. Nice. Uh, Pearl's deranged smile that carries on through the end credits was unplanned, with Ty West refusing to call cut and let the emotions play out. Mia Goth's smile becomes more strained. A tear falls down on her face, and even she even does an impatient head shake as she waits for him to call cut. It lasts for a minute and 50 sec- 51 seconds. The credits ended up being one of the more unnerving scenes of the film. I remember that oh, yeah. where she just like cuz we kept like watching until it stopped. Yeah. Um Pearl tends to hush those she kills as she did with Mitzi and the Scarecrow who she saw as the projectionist and ultimately ultimately killed. In X, this is mirrored when Maxine hushed Pearl before running over her head with a pickup truck linking the two characters together. <coughs> For no reason. Uh, Pearl's dress and bike resemble that of Miss Almira Gulch 
from Wizard of Oz when she sneaks out of the movie house the first time. Why did you say for no reason? Oh, to your thing, like to link those two characters for no reason because they're not related and it's dumb that they're implying that. They weren't. They were just like it upsets me that they want us to believe there's a connection. They were saying she's the same type of person. It bothers That's me. Literally, what it is. Anyway, he doesn't. He's dumb. When Pearl reaches the first stage, the stage for her audition, there's an X on the floor to mark where she's supposed to stand. This was a reference to X, the first from the soon-to-be trilogy. Indeed. I mean, not quite indie. Oh, you said indeed. Never mind. Ha ha. See what I did there? All right. We're going to talk about our favorite and least favorite things. But before that. Oh, yes. We have to give the uh, Rotten Tomatoes Rotten Tomato score. So Rotten Tomatoes, for those who don't know, because you... Uh, we've got like three people that watch on a regular basis, four people, and they actually would know this, but they would probably well, miss it if we didn't say it. So and, we'll say it for them. Yeah. I mean, there's also like the millions and millions of people who know who Rotten Tomatoes are Let's anyway, see. but. My buddy Josh watches, my girl Danielle, and Nicole watches all the time. And those are the only guaranteed views we get. <laughs> No, I know there's a few other people that watch too. But anyway, the point is, um, what did the uh, Rotten Tomatoes, they take all the critics' scores that they consider official critics, and then they average them just positive and negative. So what percentage of the critics gave it a positive score? 91 Ninety-one percent is pretty good for a horror movie because, like we like to say, horror and comedy are the ones that get hit the worst unless they have some and sort of back message. to back. Ty West had it with these two movies with the critics loving them. The people also get to go on Rotten Tomatoes and vote positive or negative, and what they came up with was what eighty-two percent. Yeah, which, like the one last week, they were lower than the critics, which is. Weird. It's usually higher. Horror movies and comedy movies are usually higher with the with the people than the critics. Um, but this is one of those you know cases where you know it, what do they say it uh, it proves the rule. It's the exception that proves the oh, rule. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, anywho, now we'll talk about our favorite and least favorite parts. Yes. Now we will. Since you liked this, what was your least favorite thing? Okay. So my least favorite thing. Dang it, I had it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I even said it earlier. Um, So it shows it a little bit in the trailer, but she finds a scarecrow and does things to it. Adult things. Things I didn't need to be in this movie. Mm-hmm. An entire probably two and a half minute or more scene of of her pulling this thing down off of its thing Perch, and stand whatever and having her way. Yeah. All right. Well, my least favorite part was probably. I wish it had a little more action. It went a little more into like the drama stuff. But it made sense. It's, I'm I'm nitpicking to be fair. Oh yeah. But I would say, you know, a little bit more action, maybe a couple more people for her to like take out would have been nice. Um, but again, that's nitpicking. Yeah. What was your favorite part? Uh, it was mentioned in the facts, so I can solidify that this is real. But the over-the-top, bright, vivid colors that they went out of their way to use in this movie. I thought it was cool in The Munsters when we watched it, and I liked it in this. I think having that old feeling without being grainy like Tarantino's stuff is a cool feeling for these movies. All right. I would say my favorite part was because they shut down production of X during COVID... And this is a fact from last week. If you had, if you didn't see last week's episode, um, they wrote this one to fill in backstory, and then they made it into a script uh, and got it greenlit before that one was even done. So they got to 
add things to that movie and to this movie to connect them, you know, more thoroughly. Yeah. And I like how many connections they did make between the two. Um, Without making it feel repetitive. Yeah. Yeah. It would be like a little nod to this or, a, you know, someone offhandedly mentions something else. The way she words things possibly yeah. because talking patterns. Being but there was, a, there was a lot of little connections that I was like, hey, that's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. You know, like standing on the X or whatever. It's like, okay. I see. But it also made sense for her as trying to be an actress. They would have a mark for her to stand on. And it would most likely be an X. Right. No, so, like, it makes sense All on around. its own. And it ties in when you see them together. Oh, yeah. And I like that. You don't have to watch both to understand both, but I suggest they you They become do. more entertaining. On a scale of 1 to 10, how do you rate Pearl? I think I gave the last one a nine or a nine and a half. You did. I'm going to give this an eight and a half only because it's not quite as good as the first one, but it's dang good. I'm going to go with an eight, which I think was what I gave the last one. Um, it's dang good, like you said. It's not quite as good. I might have went eight and a half last week. I, I'm not actually sure, but I'm just feeling an eight for this, so that's what I'm going to say. That. Even if I gave that an eight, this one is not quite as good, but it's right there. Yeah. It's right there. And we're not going to do 7.9, so just listen up. All right. Yeah. So there we go. That's our review of Pearl. I highly suggest you go out and watch, watch X. Both of them. And then watch. You don't. You should watch them in that order, though, because yeah. X makes sense as the first one. And to be fair, Maxine, Triple X in Maxine, is coming hopefully shortly. I yeah, could only assume. Like, they were they, able to write that and... They're working on it and getting ready to... You know, they've started filming, right? They've already started filming. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that, to be honest. Me uh, too. Now comes the regular stuff that we do over here on the side. Yes. So you can watch this show on channel... On Fact TV, channel 1076, Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. and Fridays at 7 p.m. You can like us on Facebook. And when I say us, I mean Gory Storytime. And you can also like... Uh, Fact TV yes. because they live stream stuff and you know definitely do that. Yes, um, you can go to factdate.com and watch a bunch of the back episodes of this as well as many other pieces of in information, entertainment. That's yes. true. A lot of local stuff. Lots um, of you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Craig Jakes, all one word, all lowercase. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Jiggly Firm Brain. I only tweet things that he says that I find funny. In, in or out of context. Whichever is out. Usually out, but once in a while the context makes it funnier. Yeah. So that's that's when that happens. Um, he really likes to try to make me look certain ways I with do. whatever I say. I do, but it helps that he is that way. Ah, anyway. <laughs> uh, also, check out my YouTube channel. Uh, you just type in Gory Storytime, it'll pop up. Uh, it was Juggalo Jakes for the longest time, but I got... I just changed it to Gory Story Time. But what will come up is episodes on my page, and it'll come up with Fact TV's page because they have. I told them they can post it yeah. up there too, and they have been. You'll find some there that you won't find on mine, even. Um, not exclusive, it was just the way it worked out. But, uh, you know, like and subscribe and all the to both. Indeed. Smash that notification bell, as they like to say. And and subscribe and comment down below your yeah. favorite part of our episode. And share, homie. Like, make this is help us make money. No, this isn't the one that would make do us that. a million dollars of wooden dimes monies. Wooden dimes. Come on, they're worth twice as much well, as a wooden nickel. Next week we'll be back with our last of our four. 2022 releases. And then we're going to come up with a series of four of a different topic, basically. And maybe we'll do a couple in between. Who knows? Until then, I've been your host, Jason. I'm his co-host and father, Craig. And, and sweet, sweet dreams. dreams.